Hey, Twit, Twitter, Twat, Face Blast, Nathan's gonna be on here. Well, that sounds uh, very democratic in a, in a way. 
It was really interesting. We'd have people that were like, oh my God, I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, apparently they're like a non, there's lots of them. And they're, they're, they're online at weird hours. <laughs> Was your first musical instrument a ukulele? No. It was, uh, I guess, just a guitar or a piano at my grandparents' house. Were they musicians also? No. no. And your parents musicians? My dad was a big music lover. His collection of records and 45s is what really got me into it. Just boxes and boxes of everything she ever did and, and every, all, every, she being... She being yeah. Yeah. The great she here.
nothing could be clearer. Nothing could be clearer. Stories here, actual events in the I traveled here from rural Australia in the mountains northwest of Sydney. I have a radio program on my small town's community radio. My show is called From the Mud to the Stars. I'm in San Francisco to enjoy hardly strictly bluegrass, to attend some open mic poetry meetings, to soak up some of the wonders of San Francisco. This is my third visit in four years. Terry Yates, where are you? Welcome. Can we uh, hear you on the internet? Your playlists are on the radio, on the internet. All right. So we look for you through uh, from the mud to the stars. We're in Australia. Um, we're, uh, about four hours northwest of Sydney. Four hours northwest of Sydney. Yeah. Well, good. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good. Directions. It says here, start here. Uh, Thursday, I watched Lucretia Borgia go mad and did herself in an amazing opera. It strangely soothed me after a rough Giants season. <laughs> Today I will eat the little deep orange fleshy pumpkin I just bought to see ACT's production of Once in a Lifetime for the matinee. See you there. Uh, I might have a mad uh, moment and perch my pumpkin on the seat next to me and dress it if my giant in my Giants cap, Conchita Corazon. <laughs> and here's one. After a turbulent week of bad news, divisive politics, international unrest, stagnant job growth, what we needed was a day away, a bit of renewal. So up early and on our way from Palo Alto, brother and family in hand, to spend the morning of West Coast Live in this lively conversation, great music, Judy Collins, no less, and fabulous guests, and it would still leave enough time to stop on the way home in Hillsboro for a nostalgic visit to the McCain Palin Lawn Sign Museum. <laughs> Uh, sweet, sweet <laughs> yeah, I like that one, Mike. Uh, ten minutes ago, I went to get some tea at Pete's and ran into my ex-boyfriend's brother, who showed me and pointed to his new eye lift. Great, I said. <laughs> Then he asked me if I was on Match.com. <laughs> what? I think you speak up in person. I don't know if you did. Uh, Terry Province uh, writes this. To get here today, I first had to wake up sometimes at chore. What was it, Somerset, Mom? That it, I was recommended as a boy to do two things every day. Oh, I hear rats when it's shot by Liz Bunny that we're going to post up on the side. I go to bed at night. <laughs> anyway, I first had to wake up sometimes at chore. I had to go outside and feed horses and chickens where I ran into Bambi and Child. 
just before they ran to safer grounds. Shower, gathered up stuff, jump in the car, catch ferry, arrive and eat chocolate. Quality time with spouse, life is good. Here's a card, what's the Boer War? <laughs> well, once upon a time. Right? All right, thank you, Case. Uh, two weeks ago when I was having tea and scones in Bath, England, I received a text message from a friend at home in San Francisco. The text read, Are you free October 1 for an early birthday outing? I replied, Affirmative. My friends and I met this morning at 8.15, walked here from the mission where we both live, uh, but I had no idea that we were going to attend West Coast Live until my friend Duffy handed me the program. Surprise! Great birthday present. All right, well, well done. Today the math, I'm the math. Let's see, just before the show started, my contact lens popped out, and a whole section of the audience crawled around on the floor helping me to find it. Thank you, Eric, who found it. Blessings from uh, Denise. Uh, is it Elgin or Elgin, Illinois? Elgin, Elgin. Uh, West Coast Live Haiku. Autumn <laughs> Light Returns, Saturday Morning Red Shoes, West Coast Live Delight. Nice, I like that. Can we put it on the website? We'll credit it to you. Because right. when I felt as though Nathan Moore was singing to me when he canted, What if you saw a UFO and you were the only one? <laughs> Sex, look out behind you! <laughs> and uh, this last one, I'm here with Justin Torres. I ironed his shirt this morning. <laughs> Go on, Mr. Equinox, since I think we last met. Uh, our natural is Claire Peasley, who's uh, somewhere around. There, there she is, uh, out from Point Reyes Bird Observatory and uh, with PRBO Conservation Science. Stand, no, no, we're going to stand right here. Yeah. The season has turned. You know, I, it didn't take long after the equinox for winter to get here. And uh, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, the first real low pressure gung ho rainstorm system series is on the way and uh, you know the transition between summer and winter this sort of waiting for rain period in central California you think about what happens in the natural world it's sort of a hallmark of the season so I, that's why I went to visit the wapiti what are the wapiti? that's the other name for elk it means white butt or pale rump, if you want to be really, like, polite. But that's usually how you see them running away. Well, these are, uh, out at Point Reyes, they, they tolerate people pretty well, and especially if it's, like, kind of deserted when I go. So I sit on a hillside, and they sort of, like, munch their, chew their cud and, and watch out for the big male who's herding them from place to place. At this time of year, it's the rut which is an old, old word that comes from to roar. So they sound like this. Judging from their behavior, a lot of the females were turning their wapiti towards the male. And it wasn't because... Now, now, that can mean any number of things. <laughs> they were in retreat. Oh. And he would charge around and make noise at the other nearby big bowls, and then he would go down into the swale where the vegetation is soft, and he would... Wait, she wins $100 to see what word was swale today. <laughs> Not sedge. No. He was down in the swale, along with all the bracken, and etc., and plunged his giant 40-pound rack into the earth and root around, and the vegetation would fly, and he would lift up his proud head, draped in weeds, and strut amongst his, his harem, showing off his headgear. 
and his muddy belly. And his, Such a plumage. Oh, he was proud. Yeah. He was definitely so, proud. and then he still made that sound, the, the, was, that bar is rather a sheet roar. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, was it effective? Well, the other males were impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the females seemed to be one Oh, a GTO convertible. Uh, <laughs> and then they sort of run at them, and then the little single spike bulls that don't have the whole rack yet would try and like hide their antlers from him and come into the herd or around the edges. And then if you've got one, your family would charge and roar and rut. And, et cetera. and do they mind you watching? These, these were just... Um, the kind of a boy you were out there. In the That's exactly right. And I, I, wore, proud of it, I wore camouflage clothing. I took off my white uh, cowgirl creamery cap and you know, sat on it so that <clears throat> I would blend in. You wouldn't want to show that white rum, right? No. <laughs> that cap on your behind. You wouldn't tuck it into your rear pocket. Never wear it there. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I went out there oh, and, my God. You remember that once hunting for geos? Uh, and it was snowing in Washington State, and it was part of a geology class. And I was wearing a kind of brown trousers and a brown ski parka and a, a brown old copper dancing pack. And I was in the snow there. And then I suddenly heard gunfire. I realized it was deer season. And there I was out in the snow looking like a two-legged deer walking around. I could, I, I was in, I had to bang a shovel and a pickaxe to get the time. I am not a deer, I am not a deer. I came back with a geo. It was worth so that's only if you care about a geo, then your winter journey is worth, worth the risk. Right. right. Well, I wanted to bring you a report from Outer Point Reyes. I wanted to invite everybody to come out for the change of seasons. Um, a program that I'm co-leading over the uh, Columbus Day weekend, I think it is. We don't call it that. Yeah, we just call it waiting for rain season. We're gonna we're gonna take uh, nature laughter walks for immersion in nature, and then we're gonna come back into the music studio and do poetry and rhythms and experimenting with. And you and you and you loop elk. What was it, Wapiti? Wapiti. Wapiti calls? Uh, you know, anything can happen in a music and nature retreat with, uh, with Claire and 11 of them, or maybe uh, 11 females and two males, which was enough to start a, a whole new herd, and there are hundreds of them out there now. Hundreds of, dozens of have they reached? Has, have they reached the nuisance level? Well, in nuisance, depending on your point of view, I mean, there's, they're not interfering with farms, so they're on their own land, on a preserve. They're, they're reaching... But they're not eating some grandmother's patoons. No, thankfully. Uh, no, they, are in, they are actually in the roots in of us, the you guys. get this. You know how the animals have all of that, uh, the calcium and all of that, all oh, right. minerals in them? Oh, well, they get poached if they, uh, when the elk drop them, so the park service goes out and picks them all up. Takes them back to park headquarters, puts them through a chipper, and drops them back out of the land so all those minerals go back. The, the range is changing, it's improving over time. And the elk, well, there's a crowd of them out there.